Hey guys, it's Michelle here with Angel Souls. I woke up this morning and I was just sort of musing about this spiritual YouTuber industry and what has happened. So I just thought I would go slap on some makeup and sit down. This is not my normal filming day. If you haven't met me yet, there's me. And then there is the entity known as my hair. So it does not look good today. <laughs> And I'm trying to keep it under control. I do have a hair tie just in case things get really out of hand, you know, but I just thought I would sit down. It's going to be kind of a long video, maybe. Um, and I just want to talk about some of the things that have been going on with card readers and with YouTubers. Okay. So I'm going to give some behind the scenes information, some of the challenges, some of the things uh, you know, that have happened over the past several years. So if that sounds like something you want to hang around for, then be here. If you don't, I totally understand. So <laughs> what I was thinking about this morning, I got up and every morning I wake up, I look at my client list. I make sure that I get everybody lined up for the day. And oh, by the way, I set this precedent now where people don't get personal readings until I announce that I'm all caught up on personal readings. So <laughs> I'm like, oh, great. So now you guys are going to be seeing me announce that, you know, quite a bit because that's the only way that people are now coming in and getting the requests. They're waiting until I'm all caught up. So I, I get it. But now you're going to be seeing that quite a bit. But yeah, I was just thinking this morning, I'm like, what in the world? Like how different everything is from the time I started Angel Souls until now. So I'm going to dip not only into the YouTuber side of things, but also into our industry in general. When I started my YouTube channel back in 2013, things were incredibly different for YouTube. I mean, it was a completely different uh, way of approaching it. Um, if you were a spiritual YouTuber, you had 50,000 subscribers. I mean, you were doing well. I mean, you know, it, we aren't like Shane Dawson. We aren't PewDiePie. We're not, we're not Casey Neistat, right? So we're not doing that kind of content. And so, you know, and also our, our content is dated more often than not, if you're a reader, you're doing it for a certain time frame, and then you have to just keep it rolling, right? So now all of a sudden we're seeing this surge and I'm gonna get into that in just a moment. But back in 2013, I came on not knowing much about YouTube, kind of learning as I went, just did that thing of just get on, <laughs> just get on the channel. Little did I know I was coming in during the Doreen Virtue surge. Now. I have to explain this. I don't remember. I think I've talked about it here and there, but for the most part, I try to just stay out of that stuff. But um, when I came in, honest to God, I did not know who Doreen Virtue was. I knew that I was using Dex with her name on it, but I didn't know how obsessed everybody was. So I really, it was just kind of weird timing. When I came in, I got swept up in the tornado <laughs> of everybody and their viewpoints. And I would have viewers come to me and say, well, if you don't have a Doreen Virtue certification, we'll talk about that in a minute, but if you don't have a Doreen Virtue certification, then you're not worth getting a reading from. If you haven't read all the Doreen Virtue books, then you don't know anything about angel mediumship. And so out of pure necessity, I went off, I got Doreen Virtue's books. She was coming to New York. This was, was it October, 2013. And there was also an I Can Do It Summit. So I went to both of those and you know, it wasn't because I felt like I didn't know what I was doing and I needed a certification, but I wanted to see what the big deal was and why everybody was so driven by this force, right? And I learned, okay, this is kind of fun. It's kind of interesting. It's a very different take. It makes angels very accessible. Now, everything that I say in this video is merely my opinion it's just my opinion. I'm not saying it, that it's fact, right? It's just how I feel. But some of that work, I really didn't resonate with. As a matter of fact, I, I've kind of now coined that era, the era of the, you know, the comfort guru, right? So as long as somebody makes us feel good about ourselves, gives us an excuse for why things happen the way that they do, I can be at peace. And this is what we were dealing with. Again, just my opinion. So what I saw was a lot of people giving into escapism kind of thinking, even to the point of, hey, you're not really human, okay? So, which is very dangerous. I'm gonna lay it out there. It's very dangerous. We are all here to be human. Now you can talk about, you have different origins, 
Um, you, we all have different strains in us to do a certain purpose here. I totally get that. But to think that you are not human at all, and that's the explanation why you don't fit in. That's the explanation as to why bad things happen to you. That's why, I'm sorry for all the eye rolls, um, but it is frustrating to me, and it was frustrating to me back then, especially coming in as an angel medium and banging into everybody's expectations. I wasn't ready for it, right? So I came on to YouTube, I was a little like shy. You guys don't know this about me maybe, but I'm a complete introvert. <laughs> <laughs> I really am. I'm very comfortable in front of a camera, but I'm an introvert. And um, yeah, when I came in and everybody, you know, they were putting that pressure on me, I wanted to respect people's beliefs. So I would, if somebody got a reading from me, I would talk in the language that they were comfortable with, right? So if they were very much in, in that kind of energy of just uplift me and whatever, I would try to be very gentle with them because I am an empath and I can feel <laughs> where you know where, where their downfall is I can feel all that but I can't necessarily just be a blaring mirror it's our duty to be a mirror but I can't be a blaring mirror because it's just going to knock them down even further so there was a lot of crafting in communication okay now weirdly well maybe not that weirdly um, but I when I got on YouTube I sort of became the one that tells it like it is I got a lot of hate for that. I got a lot of love for that. <laughs> and I was confounded. I was like, oh, is that blunt? Oh, sorry. Um, maybe I'm not very self-aware or something. I don't know. But um, it was just in stark contrast to what people were used to. And so I would get, oh, you're negative. Uh, and that was all just because I'm like, hey, guys, no, you're human. Why don't you be human? And one of my biggest goals with my YouTube channel was to always be relatable, OK, to just be me to remind you that I'm human, don't put me on a pedestal, don't, you know, cause I'm out, shoot, I'm hitting my midlife crisis right now and I'm out exploring and I'm trying to figure things out and I'm making mistake after mistake after mistake, getting with the wrong people, um, you know, opening my heart up to people just to be crushed by them and I'm not a victim, I'm just saying that's like part of the process. It's I'm going in and dipping back out and trying something else and you know, the last thing I need is for people to think I've got all my stuff together and like because I'm talking to angels everything just flows perfectly I am human as well <laughs> right? and so I need space and freedom to be able to explore in that way and you know again going back to 2013 even going into 2014 with my YouTube channel it was a lot of I'm not people didn't want to believe that they were human and I definitely couldn't be human so I couldn't make mistakes on my lighting I couldn't make mistakes on uh, the microphone or the camera shot or you know whatever <laughs> again I've gotten really used to talking about my hair and like warning people oh by the way I have chip nail polish too because I'm just sitting down I wasn't expecting to film today <laughs> but people will nitpick it's the internet right so I just that was starting to kind of rub me the wrong way of not being able to be human and not be able to take the approach that I felt was appropriate I even had a viewer one time yell at me and said, I'm gonna tell Doreen Virtue that you're not doing things right. I had another, <laughs> I'm, oh, actually she said, I'm gonna turn you into Doreen Virtue, as if Doreen Virtue owns me, uh, which was really weird. And another viewer came and said, oh, I went to the Certified Angel card reader thing, and now I know you haven't been doing it correctly. I'm gonna tell you how it's done. And you might sit there and go, Michelle, come on, this is the internet, but I'm going somewhere with this. So just hang with me. <laughs> okay. So in the beginning, it was pretty simple to get on YouTube. You could just kind of do your thing and let it ride. And as I said, I, I kind of came in, in this Doreen Virtue era, unbeknownst to me. And I was flying with that. My channel started growing in a crazy way. I was getting, there was one day where I got, I think 25 reading requests, something like that in one day. Oh, you know, like, oh my gosh. And this was before I was doing courses or anything like that. And I was at the time as well, I was doing a weekly. I started with a weekly and then I went to doing monthlies. When I stopped doing the monthlies, my channel, it started to tank a little bit. Um, my business started to tank a little bit. Like I said, I'm gonna be very real with you. I'm gonna give it to you 
completely honestly. Um, but I also have to say, while I'm on that topic, that when I was doing the monthlies, here's what was going on. So uh, I was getting about 27,000 views on the weeklies per week. Now I barely break 3,000. And uh, I was not getting that many views on the monthlies as I, or as many on the monthlies as I was with the weekly. So I'm looking at this and I'm like, I don't know, maybe this is more for astrologers, you know, these don't seem as popular as my weekly. And they take a lot of work, <laughs> a lot of work. People do not understand this. And I don't understand some of these YouTubers out there um, who are, I love them and they're amazing, uh, but they do like 30 to 45 minute videos per sign. Let me give you the background of what goes on there. Well, I don't know how, what their process is or whatever, if they hire help to edit for them or whatever. But especially if you're a woman, I mean, not me today, obviously, but like you have to spend time putting yourself together, not just like you're gonna walk out the door and go to work, but you're on a camera with lights, okay? So that's different. Speaking of lighting, because I'm filming at a very unexpected time, there might be lines <laughs> coming through the window. I, I'm sorry, guys, you know, it's just, I try to plan this a little bit better, but I wanted to get this out. But I'm seeing these people, they have to get ready, they have to film, they're filming for every single one of those signs, and then you have to edit. Again, they might hire someone to do that for them, but if you're doing it yourself, that takes so much time. And then you have to load, and then you have to make sure your title, you have to think about your title and make sure it's really, really good. Um, for me, I have to really be careful with that because I, I feel like in a spiritual channel kind of sense, everybody expects everything to be kind of the same. That's what you want. You want dependability, something that feels like a routine, and yet I need to capture an audience. I need to let people know that I'm here because as I will get into, there's been a flood of readers that have come forward and it's just digital marketing 101. <laughs> if you want people to find your stuff, you have to stand out. So there's uh, suddenly been all this pressure to make sure you have a really great thumbnail. It used to be just my face. I could take a still from the video and it would work just fine. Now you have to craft your thumbnail. You have to really think through your tags, your description box. There is a lot, okay? You're gonna put end cards in there. P.S. I need to give a quick shout out and an apology to my Patreon supporters. I put um, videos at the end of my, my weekly and it went right over the scroll of all my Patreon supporters. That was a huge misstep on my part. I am so sorry and oversight. I'll make sure I put something at the end so that that doesn't happen. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of work that goes into it. And then you have to interact with your audience. You have to answer questions, you know, especially if people are giving you love, you know, make sure you're giving that love back. You have to spend time doing that. So this is a huge time commitment. And I don't know how other YouTubers are doing it. I admire them so much like SheBear. I love her so much. And actually she's always very put together. I could listen to her voice all day. I love her voice. She's very insightful. And I love readers like that. I love readers who aren't just reading the cards and maybe they're not just channeling a message or being, you know, uh, bringing forward a guided message. Maybe that's more appropriate. Um, but, but they're actually giving some real insight behind what's coming forward. So that's really beautiful. And then there's, um, what's his name, Nicholas? I never know if I'm saying this right. Is it Ashball? You guys know him. He's really cute. He's got a great energy. You know, he does his little oracle cards and he channels a word in the beginning. He's really cool and he has really long videos too. And I'm always like, now I feel so lazy because I'm not doing the monthlies anymore. And I'm having a heck of a time just trying to get like some evergreen content up and doing the weeklies. I do, I'm doing the dailies now, but that's just done on my phone. But there's a lot that goes into it. And for me doing the monthlies, I wasn't getting the return on the monthlies. And it was, again, I'm gonna get very real with you. It was attracting a certain kind of viewer and bringing to me a certain kind of client that was toxic. I don't know why, but I mean, this was like, this is where I would get a lot of criticism. You're talking too fast. You're not talking fast enough. Girl, that makeup. You have, you don't know how to do makeup. You're terrible, you're this, you're that. And it was just people coming in trying to project their pain. And I don't know what it was about the monthlies with the signs and all that, but I noticed that pretty much came to a screeching halt <laughs> once I got rid of the monthlies. But as I said, it really harmed my channel. So if you are a fellow spiritual YouTuber, learn from my mistakes, okay? 
Um, also, my readings and reading requests, those went down exponentially because, I don't know, I just wasn't reaching, I wasn't, you know, clicking into the algorithm in the same kind of way. So that was a bad move on my part. And people are like, why don't you bring it back? Why don't you bring it back? Well, I tried bringing it back. <laughs> Nobody paid attention. And again, this is still something I have to get into here. And I was like, I cannot be taking a week out of every single month to sit here and do all of this. And, and it's not going anywhere. It's not helping, right? So there was that. And then we started to see this real shift in our energy around 2015 and I've talked to <laughs> fellow youtubers who came in around the time that I did this isn't everybody but the few that I've spoken to they're like I gave up I'm checking out we saw a lot of spiritual youtubers drop away uh, we saw some search and that makes me so happy I was so happy to see Ralph smart take off like he's not a reader but you know still he's a spiritual youtuber in my mind and uh he has a lot of great insight and i was like look at you uh, going for two million like okay it's possible that's really inspirational uh michelle knight you know she got up uh, past a hundred thousand subscribers she deserves a lot more um kelly rosano she really took off too and i was like good on you and then there were all these other <laughs> youtubers that came flooding in and again, that really harmed some of us who came in in that middle section. So uh, some of the OG readers that came in, you know, really when YouTube was just getting off the ground and then there's like us in the middle and then there are the newcomers. So it seemed like the OG people, maybe they were established enough. They could hire digital marketing people to handle everything. I don't know. Maybe they're just, they have a better background than I do with that stuff, but they were able to hook into that and keep going and climb, which is awesome. And again, some of the YouTubers that I spoke to, some gave up. Another one was like, I got to get a day job. I can't pay my mortgage. I can't pay my bills. I don't know what I'm going to do with my car. Um, and it was really disheartening, I think, because I think a lot of us felt like we were doing our purpose. We were taking this weird ability <laughs> that we have and being an entrepreneur with it. And uh, helping people and being of service, which is, I know for me, that's the thing that I always want to plug into. When I would have some of those clients that were a little more toxic, for every one of those, there would be three that just lit my heart up. And it was an honor to connect into their energy and to be able to help in that small way that I could. So that's why I hung in there <laughs> and have always hung in there. It's because of that. But, um, you know, some of these others, financially, it just it, it just started going downhill. There was also a lot of, and people don't seem to get this. If you're a YouTuber, the way that you make money is by selling your goods, right? So in this case, I sell readings, I sell courses. Um, I do have merch that no one was interested in. <laughs> That's the other thing, I'll just be very transparent. And I'm not the only one. I talk to all kinds of people, just, you know, people who aren't even just spiritual YouTubers. They're like, pfft. That whole Teespring thing, that didn't work. Like, it's something that YouTube came out and was encouraging. It wasn't your YouTube encouraging people, but a lot of people were doing it. Um, and it didn't work out. But, you know, the way that we make money is through sponsorships. It's through uh, maybe a brand that sees us and likes what we're doing and you like their product. And they're like, hey, you want to, you know, do a video? And especially in the spiritual community, people want to demonize that. And I really don't love that. I don't love that at all because... I'm not gonna get behind something that I don't believe in. I'm not gonna push something on you. And why shouldn't a company compensate us if I'm using my time, my equipment, my editing equipment? I'm gonna be spending a couple of days putting together a video. And you know, a lot of times I will offer things that I think will be helpful to my audience. You guys know I love God's provisions. The reason why I do that every month, even though those videos don't get very many views, I genuinely love the products. Now that's not a sponsored video, that's affiliate marketing. And that's the other way that YouTubers can make money. So again, with the spiritual stuff, it's like people saying you shouldn't be getting paid. In the beginning, I was scolded for putting ads on my videos. I wasn't even allowed to get ad revenue. <laughs> and I didn't know how people thought that I was going to pay my rent, you know. So there was a lot of that sort of thing going on. So let's go to 2015. I don't know what the heck was going on then. I am not an astrologer, but I think it might have something to do with that. So if you are an astrologer and you want to 
put in your two cents. I'd love to hear it. First of all, I am so, I'm, I'm, I'm just totally impressed with astrologers. I wish I could sit down and <laughs> have the time, the patience to study it the way that some uh, people have, um, like Lada from Astrolada. I watch her a lot and I really love her take on things. She's very thorough and um, she's, she's, very, she's very relatable too. She's really incredible with that. But yeah, if you guys want to weigh in and let me know, <laughs> what energies were happening. I'd be curious to make that connection. But 2015 was a weird year. Um, it just seemed like whew, everybody's a reader now. And okay, so leading up to that, as I said, we had these certification courses. Only God can really certify you. But if you want to get a certification just to show I studied this so people know that you've put the work in, that I get. I understand that. But these uh, certification courses became so accessible that people, <laughs> again, I'm trying to be really good here. Um, people would take a one day class and think that they're channeling angels. And um, again, it was pretty dangerous because people who were just reading images off, not that I'm not trying to diminish that, that's important to read images off of a card, but people really were going out with very little experience and guiding others. I mean, okay. I mean, uh, I mean maybe, maybe you are wired for that. Okay, awesome. But we had that going on and so there was the surge of like certified angel card readers now getting on YouTube. Awesome, good for you, yes, but you know, the market started to get saturated. Then there was the tarot community, which again, I never studied that, so God bless if you, <laughs> if you know how to do it. I think that is so impressive. I mean, I know a little bit, but I really, I really admire when people are able to do that. But um, yeah, like all of a sudden there was this young crowd that came out of, I assumed, and I'm just speculating, that's all this is, is speculation, but they came out of college studying videography, uh, studying, studying digital marketing or, you know, whatever. They came out with the skills because they were watching YouTubers this whole time, right? And so when they came out the gate, they hit the ground running. I'm sitting back going, how did you get your lights to look like that? How? <laughs> like, how are you doing all these cool edits? Like, where'd you learn that, you know, kind of thing. And, you know, they, they kind of just went ahead and it was really weird. And I would love for you guys to weigh in. Did you notice that? Or is that just me? I don't know, but it was just like, now everybody's a card reader, which is exciting because the more the merrier. And yet, well, now from a business standpoint, there's lots of competition. And that was one of the things that I also heard from people who, came onto YouTube about the same uh, time frame I did. They were like, my business, my business went from like being very lucrative and I could make ends meet to crickets. Like I'm just sitting around because there are too many new fresh faces who <laughs> are making their videos look so much better than any of us know how to do. Like we, I didn't go to school. There was no such thing as like studying YouTube stuff. I mean, no, it didn't even exist when I was in school. So I had to learn the hard way. I'm not a victim, I'm just saying. That was just my path and that's what I had to do. So that was in 2015 and these people went from like, you know, it's only been four years and a lot of them are over 100,000 subscribers. Some of them are on their way to a million. And I'm sitting here going, now shoot, I did not crack no code. I don't know, <laughs> I have missed something. I don't know what that is. So then we got into the, as I said, we were in this Doreen Virtue phase. And when she took that turn and changed, when I heard it, I was like, oh, huh. I was shocked. And I was like, whoa, okay, that <laughs> pivot. Okay, that's, that's big, but good for her. Okay, like if that's what she felt like she needed to do next, who cares? Except everybody cared. I also didn't know at the time all the stuff she was saying about readers. Again, I've talked to people. This didn't happen to everybody, but for a few of us, that completely destroyed our business. Because, and again, this is just me offering my viewpoint. From my standpoint, what I witnessed was that people either ran to follow her because they were so, I, say, I wanna say addicted. I'm gonna use that word addicted. They were so addicted to her energy that they went her way. Some of them were so scared that they felt maybe they didn't have a choice. I don't know. Others came to me and said, I'm not kidding you guys, this actually happened. We don't have Doreen Virtue anymore. Michelle, now I'm gonna follow you. I mean, 
you're, you're the only one that's left. I'm not the only one that's left, <laughs> like, not at all. But um, they expected me to be the substitute Doreen. And that was never gonna happen. She and I are such different beings with much different, you know, paths in life. But it was very, very strange to watch everyone's reaction to it. So that was a very, very interesting time. And then there was further fallout. So people, so what I saw was that people were either, uh, like I said, following Doreen and suddenly being terrified to be, you know, have anything to do with cards or angel mediums or anything like that, or just they had been, I think, kind of lifted up by the idea of it, and then it was a big disappointment, so they just went away entirely, or they were trying to cling on to me, or running on to tarot readers. Interesting, right? At least that's my perspective. I want to hear what you guys have to say about that, but I felt like people, like tarot readers, this was a good time for you. Now, some of you, I'm sure a lot of you are going to be like, excuse me, <laughs> you know, some of you out there are gonna be like, my business wasn't doing well at that time either. Talk to us about that because, hey, this is the forum to be very honest and, you know, whatever your financial fears around this, you know, trying to live your purpose but still be able to take care of yourself, like that's a delicate balance. Again, especially in this industry where they think that you should always be in poverty, where you should, you know, just magically someone just pays for my house. I don't know. If some rich person wants to come in and buy me a house, I'll take it, you know, but it's not happening. We have to balance doing this work and taking care of ourselves and being able to financially take care of ourselves. Um, but what I saw was a lot of popularity with tarot card reader channels because I think it was the rebellion. There was that group. Well, Doreen Virtue, okay, fine. She's going to go that way. I'm going back to what I was always comfortable with right? It's an ancient esoteric art. So that started to happen. Now the fallout from that, because I don't read tarot, um, as I was kind of touching on, I either had people be like, can you be my mommy now? Um, or, you know, I don't know, they were just uh, expecting me to fill this void. And I'm over here just trying to do my thing and, and just trying to make it. And maybe it's me personally, the midlife crisis is happening for me, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's just, I think I, I don't know why I woke up this morning thinking about that or feeling the need to sit and put this out there. I guess once I post it, whatever the reaction is from people, I think that'll give me some clarity. And if it's negative, I will never give up my YouTube channel. You know, I'll never do that. Um, because this is my, I mean, this, I got on right before YouTube was really took off. And so this is my baby here. <laughs> so this will always be here. Um, if I have anything to offer for courses, I will offer that. Um, but you know, I don't know, this is kind of going to be a breaking point video for me. Do I go get the day job <laughs> or do I, uh, choose a different path? Uh, again, with a midlife crisis, anything could break so that something else can come forward. I'm just waiting and waiting and waiting again, astrologers, isn't it supposed to be over by the age of 42? Please tell me yes. <laughs> Cause I'll turn 43 November 12th. And hopefully I'll be free. I don't know, like not free of this career, but, you know, have some clarity about where my place is in all of this. So, yeah, I think that's all I wanted to say about it. Let me know. Even if you have, like you're watching this and you're aggravated. I mean, I don't want any hate circulating around, but it's going to give me clarity. It's going to let me know what my next step needs to be. So I may go ahead and record. I'm kind of feeling like I'm in... <laughs> in the zone. I might record the weekly. Um, I will, I'm, I'm intending to record some videos on the 2020 energies, 2020 to 2024. So those will be coming out. And um, what else am I doing? Oh, I was going to do 2020 overview videos for each of the signs that I will do. Those are fun that I can do. I, that's not a big deal. But again, I'm watching carefully. And I hope if any of you out there are going through a similar moment like this, that we can be a support to one another. Um, all love and blessings to everybody who have really shown us that it's possible to take off <laughs> and to have a lot of success. But if you do feel like you're going through a major shift, some of that is that 2020 energy that I will get into in another video. I'll probably save that for tomorrow because that will take notes. I want to make sure I hit everything. I don't want it to just be free form like this one. But, um, you know, it could be that. 
um, if or if you yourself if you're going through a midlife crisis so we can talk about that as well but let's just leave it there I'm sending you all so much love and take care